Happy Friday. What do you worship? And this is a, a question that is actually a little harder, I think, for people to answer than they might think, because what we worship is not based on conscious thought alone, but it's also based on the aggregate of our actions, the things that we do. When we worship, we sacrifice something finite to hold higher, to give honor to, to give praise to, to show the value of something else. Um, it could be something as small as a, a pin on your lapel, on your shirt, that has some sort of a message or a, a face or a symbol or a quote. You know, what we're showing is in a very small manner, it's like we identify with that and we're going to sacrifice what comes from us demonstrating that association. You know, that people are going to have things that they say and think about us because of that pin or because of the, the comments on the t-shirt or the things that we say in a video. When we sacrifice what we sacrifice to and what guides our actions and activities tells us about what we worship. And what's interesting is that uh, we're all being conditioned to worship this idea that we should be masters of our own fate that we should wrestle with the cosmic powers that be in order to achieve a, a result that we are satisfied with. This occurs in video games. Uh, I recently started a, a new character in World of Warcraft, and one of the lines in the um, introductory cinematic was quite literally, you know, become a hero. You know, the idea being that uh, I have work to do, I have ta choices to make and, and struggles to have uh, as part of, you know, mastering my own destiny. Uh, we saw that with some of the really popular movies, um, the Avengers series with um, the big purple guy, Thanos. There we go. Uh, the whole idea was that, you know, he was this cosmic power that was building this huge narrative and this big story. And there was a big climax. Um, and then people dissatisfied with where that story went, then had to struggle to undo the past, basically, to, to make a new future, to afford a new fate for everybody to become the hero. And, and we see this even in things that it's it's kind of weird, like the, the pandemic. Everybody's being uh, conditioned to be a hero in there as well. Uh, one example would be, you know, wearing masks or uh, social distancing, um, you know, washing your hands more often. Um, you know, it's, it's things that you're being told in, in one way or another. It's like you need to become the hero. You need to do something because the fate that you are consigned to experience is bad it's wrong and it needs to change and it won't change unless you do something and what's interesting is that uh, there have been secular and scriptural warnings about this kind of mentality and and what people would sacrifice as part of their worship the first quote i want to try and provide is one that is pretty famous from uh, benjamin franklin um, talking about liberty and safety. Uh, one, the shortest version of the quote, there's a lot of different versions of it, but um, the shortest version is, he who sacrifices freedom for security deserves neither. And what this effectively is, is a criticism of the method of worship of security. So the idea being that if you're worshiping, you're sacrificing something. And what he's calling out is that if you're sacrificing freedom for security, you're going to get neither of them. Because that's not how you get secure, and your freedoms are not worth giving up for the impression of security. Because ultimately, our freedoms aren't what put us at risk in the first place. Our freedoms aren't the, the reason that we have difficulties in life, and neither is a lack of security. You know, ultimately, we can't have the power to get everything we want in life. And so safety, security, freedom, all of these things are relative. So when we're sacrificing one relative thing for another relative thing, you know, we're not really playing around in the realm of truth, of what's real. You know, safety is a perception. Freedom is a perception. These things do have a coherent definition. But when you try and ask two different people what they think something is, you get two different answers. And it's because... As a society, we no longer reside in truth. We are no longer pursuing truth. We are now sacrificing truth in favor of fiction. We're sacrificing in worse ways. And this 
exchange of freedom for safety, for security, is just the, the downstream byproduct of that more fundamental worship that is going on. I mean, people thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if? And that became the framework for a new form of worship, where wouldn't it be great if now determines whether the faith that we are going to experience is good or bad. And the thing is, that Scripture talks about this too, that the way that we worship, the things that we sacrifice, what we fear, what, what guides us is important. The first uh, scriptural reference I want to provide is uh, John twelve twenty five. It says, uh, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And what's amusing about that is, that it's, again, it's like, you know, this, this is not a, a soft term. You know, these are not easy framings. You know, it's not really loose. It's very clear. If you love your material life, you're going to lose everything you value. But if you hate your material life in this world, you will keep your life for eternity because you're not going to be basing your value. You're not going to be worshiping the things of this life. You can't worship God and your life in this world. You have to pick one. And you're going to end up hating the other because what you do to worship one is a mutually exclusive act to the other. So you can't worship God and also be a hedon, hedonist at the same time. The two, you, you can't do both. You know, it's like counting the corners on a circle. It's logically incoherent. When you value and worship God, you're going to sacrifice the things of this material world. When you love this material world, you are going to sacrifice the things of God. And one of those things is fear. In Matthew 10, 28, it reads, And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body or soul and body in hell. Our fear even is something that shows us a bit about who we worship, what we worship. If we are more afraid of a virus that could kill us than we are of people no longer being in fellowship as is commanded by God. If we're more afraid of persecution than we are of preaching the gospel then we're worshiping the material life that we have and not God. And we see this most clearly in the prayer of Jesus Christ in the garden before he was taken to be crucified. In Matthew 26, 39, it says, uh, going, oops, uh, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. What Jesus is showing here, this is the worship of God. It would be great, basically, he's what he's saying. It would be great if I didn't have to go through this, but I'm going to sacrifice what I want, what I think is important, to satisfy the plan that you have set in, play, in motion. Because your plan is good. You are good. And I'm trusting in you, Father God, to make the right choice on how I'm going to proceed forward. And if the circumstances were at all possible to be different, then great. But if this is the fate you have decided for me, if this is the path you have put before me to walk, then I'm going to do so in faith and obedience, even if it costs me everything. And that's what it did. It cost Jesus everything in this life, in this material world. He died for our sins. He gave up everything that he could have had in this life for something so much more valuable. So what is it that you worship? What is it that you're sacrificing right now? What do you fear and what guides your choices on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you trying to become a hero? Are, is it your story that really matters most? Are you the one that gets to decide what the future should hold for you? Or are you worshiping God? Are you worshiping the Holy Spirit? Are you worshiping Jesus Christ? 
Are you looking at, at the examples that they have made where they submit to one another? And through their submission, they are then exalted by those whom they submit to. Are you looking at the dynamic of trust where even in the midst of great difficulties, we have all sorts of people throughout the Bible, uh, Joseph, David, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and uh, their friend uh, Daniel, uh, even Jesus Christ. You know, in each case, there is great material struggle, but they trust that God's will is going to be the best for them. That even if it looks bad, even if the things that they are experiencing are troubling, that if they are in relationship with God, if they have been reconciled to God, then it's worth it. It's worth the sacrifice of this life to gain so much more in the next. So again, what, what is it that you're worshiping? What do you sacrifice and to what end do you sacrifice it? Think about this Friday. And if you don't know, if you don't know what to do with that, where to go with it, as always, pray, read scriptures, understand what people have known and spoken before, because none of this is new. The answers aren't new. The approaches aren't new. There's just a new presentation. There's a new medium for the same truths to be dealt with. And there are correct answers. And they can be known. And they can be followed. Take care. God bless.